Now, I'm really excited to see where this hardware is going to go and what Elon's going to do with this, because I think, you know, if he says this jump to the AI5 chip is that big of a jump, then I'm really interested to see what this is. Now, key figures like Pete Bannon are departing as Dojo teams wind down, marking a really bittersweet transition. Elon described making hard personnel choices once paths converge into on AI6. This ruthless focus on efficiency has been praised as other people have looked at this tough decision making. Now, in my times as a fractional CTO, I've navigated really hard decisions. Generally speaking, when I've made those hard decisions, looking back on them, I've been glad that I've did. So overall, I think this underscores Tesla's agility, even for the size of the company that it is, which is pretty amazing. And I think this is one of the differences to what we're seeing with Apple, what we've seen before with IBM, what we're seeing with Intel, right? Intel needed to make this kind of ruthless decision years ago, and they didn't. And I think these are the kind of things that are going to keep Tesla relevant for the next 10 to 20 years. So I'm personally a pretty big Tesla bull, if you can't tell, both on the company as well as on their products. I love their products, own some Teslas myself. Tesla ultimately is gonna shift its signals that custom AI hardware might not always justify the investment when off the shelf will work rapidly, or in this case, a simplified world one. So I kinda wanna jump over to this other uh, thread that was on X that I found was really interesting here. So Tesla and Samsung just signed a $16.5 billion AI pact. It's not about chips or cash. It's about one move that will decide which AI company survives the next decade and which disappear. So here's what the next 10 and this guy's predicting the next 10 years. Now, I'm not going to say that this is perfectly or spot on, but I think it's a really interesting take and one that I think we could all take a look at. So he says, see, while everyone is obsessed with AI models and chatbots, the real battle is happening in Silicon, right? The dirty secret is that AI companies are hitting a massive bottleneck that could kill innovation. And so Musk just showed everyone the only way through it. Here's what most people missed about the Samsung Tesla deal. Samsung's Texas, Texas plant was essentially dead, no major customers, delayed operations, bleeding money. Then Tesla shows up with a radical proposition that changes the entire game. Instead of just buying chips, Tesla will help Samsung maximize manufacturing efficiency. So I love this because we know that Elon's good at maximizing at this, maximizing manufacturing manufacturing efficiency. He's proven this. Rivian, Lucid, others have not been able to produce the level of efficiency in their models that Tesla has. They make money on every vehicle that comes off the line. Every other electric vehicle maker out there is losing money. Musk himself will walk the production line. There you go. This radical new partnership model signals three massive shifts every founder needs to understand. First, vertical integration is no longer optional for AI leaders. The old model was simple. Design your product, outsource manufacturing, focus on software. That model just died because AI chips need constant iteration between design and manufacturing. Tesla's AI 4 and 5 and 6 chips each require different optimizations. You can't achieve this without traditional vendor relationships. Now, Tesla designed AI6 chips specifically for their needs. So this is what's amazing. They haven't even started shipping the AI5 chips yet, and they're already working on AI6. This shows the emphasis and the massive re uh, ruthlessness that you've got to have for R&D or else you get left behind. So both companies sharing knowledge to optimize production and it's about create massive opportunities. The second chip is the death of chip monopolies. For years, a handful of companies controlled AI chip production. <clears throat> Intel, Intel. Limited capabilities mean limited innovation, but the CHIPS Act just pumped a bunch of money to Samsung's uh, factory. So now there's excess manufacturing cap capacity, and so you see a lot of people jumping in. Intel, TSMC, and other building massive factories. Smart AI startups can now negotiate deals that were impossible even two years ago. The third one is geographic concentration creates unprecedented collaboration. Samsung's Taylor plant is near Austin. Tesla's headquarters is in Austin. Musk can literally drive to the fab in minutes. And that's, I, I think these are interesting things to take a look at, right? And I don't think any of this is being lost on Elon Musk. I think he probably was able to negotiate a really good deal because Samsung was really hurting and that factory was just sitting there mostly empty. But I think that this is going to be an interesting shift with Musk talking about synthetic data. I want to see more about that and I'm definitely going to be watching that very closely. Uh, but, you know, you know, so I've seen a lot of different data strategies evolve, but the, the pivot emphasizes inference's role in training, which is going to be really interesting from where we're sitting today. Ultimately, it's about generating value from data, not just hoarding it. And that's kind of what we see right now. We see ChatGPT5 release and uh, an open AI trying to grab just as many users as they can to get as much data as they can. That's not going to cut for long. It will buy something for OpenAI for a time. But as we saw with the GPT-5 release, which has been an absolute and utter failure, and if you don't understand that, check out yesterday's video. 
it, it um, or two days ago, sorry, I, lose, lose, I don't even know what day of the week it is. But if we look at that, you can see that, the, you know, this is going to be a hard hit. So we can definitely see unifying chip design slashing development costs. Clustering, cluster reduces network overhead, right? And this is going to be an interesting thing as they start to stack more and more and more onto chips and reduce less, right? Because when you're doing um, AI uh, training as well as um, the AI actual querying, it's all about memory bandwidth because it's how much, how wide of a context window, how much data can you fit across that bus. And so it's not just about how much like memory is on that chip, it's about how wide, how much can you move through, right? So we're gonna see faster innovation cycles without fragmented effort. So this inference driven, Inference driven synthetic training data could dominate. That's going to be an interesting move to watch, making training more accessible and less resource intensive. This is going to blur training and inference, potentially revolutionizing model development. And I think we're going to see this. I think we're going to need to see this level of um, R&D to see AI move forward. Now, Tesla's Dojo 3 concept lives on a on through adapted hardware, uh, proving adaptability's power. Some see risks in over relying on synthetics for critical apps like driving. But I've seen this before and I've advertised on similar tech pivots, focus on what delivers real utility. I tell my developers all the time, solve the real problems, not the perceived problems, right? Now in the end, this could accelerate, this really could accelerate AI across industries, but execution is be everything. But if you know Elon Musk, he is king at execution. Now, if your company has systems that aren't executing and they're not connected, reach out to us because our specialty is helping systems get connected. Because here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. And here's some great information about our service. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology with without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com Spencer.